Now let's discuss the definition of a joint. First, this is the formal definition, as you will see on the textbook. Okay. It says, for each vector w in w, so we have two inner product spaces, v and w, each one of their own inner product, and I'm emphasizing the inner product, the space here to, to show that these are two different inner products. For every vector v, w in w, we can consider this functional. What's this functional? Is we take some vector v, we apply t to it, and then we take inner product with w. This is a linear function. It takes vectors from v and it outputs on numbers. And it's linear. And by Ries representation theorem that we saw before, there is a unique vector x in v such that this function now can be written like this. It maps a vector v into the inner product between v and x. This unique vector x that exists by Ries representation theorem, we define this t star w, the t star is the adjoint of t, to be x. That's a very mysterious definition at first. And, well, let's try to give it some interpretation. First, think of this diagram. If t maps goes from a space v to a space w, then t star goes back from w, t star goes back from w to v, and here's some interpretation. When we think of a vector, let me zoom in here. Can I zoom in? Yes. When we think of, of a vector in W, so here's my space W, we can think of a vector as really a vector, or we can think of it as some test, some way to measure other vectors against it. So we can measure every other vector against V, against W, how? by taking the inner product. So if we take other vectors in this space and we take the inner product with those vectors and w, that's a way to measure those vectors in some sense, to measure their size in the direction of w, etc. So we can think of w instead of being this arrow here, this blue arrow, we can think of w as being these level curves, all these different level curves that will classify other vectors according to on which level curve they are. So here is one vector of w, it's on this level curve, and this is represented by the fact that the inner product between this vector and w equals this number here, this distance, what position this level curve has with respect to the one that goes at the origin. Here's another vector in w, and it this other vector touches a different level curve. That level curve is, is associated to this value here, the value of its inner product with w. So that's one way to say, to think of a vector, instead of a vector being an arrow, it is just one way to measure other vector, to test other vectors against. And now the adjoint is defined like this. So this is what we want to define. We want to define what's the adjoint of t, which is a vector that maps w onto t star w. Okay. This is what we want to define as the adjoint, and we're going to do it in a very indirect way. And how is it? We're going to define level curves on v. These level curves are defined in a way that depends on w, and we define t star w as simply the vector that is associated with these level curves by this relationship here. Now, how can we define then level curves in V? Well, we take a vector here. We take a vector here, different vectors in this space. So take one of them, this vector, and to know what is the level curve it belongs to, or to know how, how, what, how it will be measured, what will be this linear function evaluated at this vector. Instead, we first map the vector here, here it is, and then we test what is the functional there, which, which is the inner product with that vector in W. This gives us a number, 
and that number is the number we assign to this level curve here. Okay. So that's a very indirect way. We can do this with a diagram also if we want. We have some vector v and we want to define a function of v on v. By, so first we can take t, then we can take inner product with w. And if we want to go directly, we would be taking inner product of v and some other vector. That other vector is what we call t star w. So I hope this helps uh, getting some intuition. It will take time. This is a very uh, deep concept, very hard to digest. In practice, how do you check that you found the right formula or that this candidate for T star really is the adjoint of T? You see here V and W pay, play very asymmetric roles. Yeah? You're trying to define a function you're trying to define what TW is and you're talking about a functional and V here is just a dummy variable just used to define this functional. From W we found some X and we defined T star W to be X and V was just the argument of this linear functional. But in practice T and W, V and W play a much more symmetric role and we can characterize the adjoint by this relationship here. If this equality holds for every V and W, then whatever candidate you had for T star W, that will be indeed the adjoint.